And here is the Writer's Almanac for Tuesday. It's the 11th of June, 2019. It's the anniversary of the great Broad Street Riot in Boston, 1837 on this day. A hot, humid Sunday afternoon, a fire engine company made up primarily of Protestant Yankees was coming back from Roxbury where they'd put out a fire. They went to a saloon, had a few drinks. They started walking down Broad Street and passed a group of about a 100 Irish immigrants on their way to a funeral. A young fireman named George Fay did something, maybe insulted somebody or hit somebody, and soon there was a melee in the street, at least 800 men fighting. The state militia had to be called out to disperse the riot. It's the birthday of the man who said, I may not be a first-rate composer, but I am a first-class, second-rate composer. Richard Strauss, born in Munich in 1864, who gave us Don Juan, Don Quixote, the opera Salome, and many others. It was on this day, 1935, that listeners first heard FM radio when the inventor Edwin Armstrong gave a demonstration of it in Alpine, New Jersey. It's the birthday of the novelist William Styron, born Newport News, Virginia, 1925, author of Sophie's Choice, The Confessions of Nat Turner, served in the Marine Corps, then went to New York, became an editor at McGraw-Hill. He was miserable there, managed to get himself fired, which left him free to write his first novel, Lie Down in Darkness, came out in 1951. It won awards, it won Great reviews. He was compared to Faulkner, James Joyce. He moved to Europe. He married Rose Burgunder, a poet, became friends with James Jones, James Baldwin, George Plimpton, American writers living in Paris. They founded the Paris Review there. William Styron, who liked to write in the afternoons in longhand on yellow sheets of paper. He said, I like to stay up late at night and get drunk and sleep late. The afternoon is the only time I have left, and I try to use it to the best advantage with a hangover. But in 1985, shortly after he turned 60, when he was in Paris to receive an award, William Styron stopped drinking and suddenly plummeted into severe suicidal depression, was hospitalized for over a year. It was the beginning of a long, long battle with mental illness, one which resulted in his memoir, Darkness Visible, a memoir of madness. And he spent the remaining years of his life as an advocate for mental health, but admitting that depression had sapped his writing. Here's a poem by Sharon Olson, entitled Untitled. In the place in the brain that handles names, Hannibal, Hanaliah, Atli Hamaker, the names are beginning to disappear slowly. Kissinger is still there with Joyce Brothers and Idi Amin. But my friends' relatives' names pop in and out along with my sister-in-law's maiden name, my sixth-grade teacher, my first boss. Some of my former lovers' last names are gone. Last time I checked, all the first names were still there, but no dates. Fellows I went on dates with are also gone. The room in the brain that keeps the names is airy, breezy. The wind wanders through, ruffling the paper stacked on ancient card tables. Use rocks, they say. So I'm looking for rocks to weight them down. So nice to find you here. I know you. Perhaps I was once in love with you. I have an idea. We will be like Brando and Schneider. We will do it without touching, without names. 
poem by Sharon Olson, untitled, from The Long Night of Flying, published by Sixteen Rivers Press and used by permission here on The Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. 